In this video, we're going to take a look at how to track your progress. So we'll stick here with the wall supported split squat and use this as our main lift that we'll track week to week for the sake of this video. Just want to get you to understand the concept of how to track all this. So when you write your, your progress in, what you're going to do is you're going to write the number of sets you did times the weight, if applicable, times the number of repetitions. Okay. So let's say for the split squat, week one I start with body weight and I get two sets of 12 reps in. I would write the number of sets I did. Now for body weight, I typically I don't have my clients write in that they did body weight. You can if you'd like. Um, if you do, then just put BW. If not, you just leave it blank. And then I would say 12 each leg, okay? Looking at week two, this is how we progress. Or if we look at a concept called progressive overload where week by week we're providing just a little bit more stimulus to promote the adaptations that we're looking to achieve from our efforts in the gym. So if I wanted to push myself just beyond what I did last week, I could stick with the same number of sets. Um, and then I could push myself to 13 to 15 reps on each leg. Okay. So let's hypothetically say that I was feeling good that day and I was able to get all 15 reps on each leg. Awesome. Then week three, the progression's already built in there. I'm doing an extra set. And I'm more in favor of making conservative jumps with the progression and thinking about the long term rather than just getting gung-ho on things and, and trying to progress too fast. What happens when we try to progress too fast is one, increase the risk of injury in the long haul, two, you look at performance plateaus happening. Um, a lot of times what will happen when people progress too fast is like their technique will change, and I'd say the plateaus and performance are more likely to happen than an injury, but nonetheless, down the road, you get to a certain point where you're doing it with suboptimal technique, you don't have that foundation established, and then you start to notice your weights start to plateau, and then eventually you start to regress, and then usually that's when something, you know, whether it's an injury or just a chronic ache and pain starts to pop up and present itself, and and then the likelihood that you're getting your workouts in um, decreases because there's less motivation to train, you're more focused on the pain, and you may not know how to work around it. So the message is be conservative with your progressions, right? So if I'm gonna be conservative with my progression here, I would go three sets times 15 each leg. I could even be more conservative with the progression here, and I could do 12 each leg again because now my total volume that I'm doing is I got 36 reps total for week three versus the 30 that I had on week two. Week two. Or I should really say, uh, I should really say 72 reps because you're doing both sides versus the 60 reps that you did for um, week two. But they're, 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 again, that's that's totally up to you. I want you to push yourself hard, but. Again, if we're playing the long game, that'd be a really simple progression that you could do. And then week four, we could go with three times 15 each leg. And again, we're increasing the amount of volume that we do. Let's say that you keep the same amount of repetitions for week three. Then what we could do here to make a small jump is, let's say that we put a five pound dumbbell in each hand, okay? So generally, when I write this stuff in, if I write three times five, and then the number of repetitions, the five will indicate the size of the dumbbell that I have in each hand. You could also do like the cumulative load of the two dumbbells combined and say 10. Um, whatever you prefer, whatever makes more sense to you. Um, but then I would put times 15 each leg. Okay. So that, that would be a progression that you could do or even, you know, let's say that you got 12 each leg. Then we would look at the you know the total like if we really wanted to get detailed with it we could track your body weight include your body weight into the mix include the load in your hands and then multiply uh, take that total and then multiply the total uh, by the number of repetitions that you did for the day and see what that number is and right off the top of my head i don't know that three times five times 12 is is uh, is more than three by 15 each leg but that would be a progression that you could use okay so the overall takeaway here is, is conservative increases in repetitions and load. Don't make too big of jumps. Really dial in on your technique. And you'll see, like program to program, the progression will be built, built in. So when you go to the next phase, 
the number of repetitions that you will do will decrease, which means we increase the weights, okay? You don't have to change the exercises program to program. You can keep them the same. You can make progress for a really long time by doing so. Um, eventually, you, th these programs are built in three phases. So if you were to go through the three phases and then you wanted to progress like the wall-supported split squat to the next level of split squat, then you could go with just an unsupported split squat or just split squat where you don't have the wall supporting you. Like that could be your progression for the next you know, um, cycle of your training program. So there's a lot of ways that we can do this. Um, again, if you have any questions on how to do this appropriately or specific for your circumstances, make sure you shoot a message on Telegram within the group and I'll happily answer and guide you along the way.